Welcome back. So this is a little bit different video for me. This is actually a response video to Joey Brings It. And his question is quite simple. Um, where do you see the market going? Uh, modern, vintage, um, there's prices have been going up with modern cards. Um, high grade vintage has been, keeps going up as it usually does. But I'm gonna be a little bit more specific uh, in my response. And that is what I prefer and where I see the market going is low to mid-grade vintage. Mainly because right now, in my experience, you can get some absolutely screaming deals on a lot of uh, vintage low and mid-grade cards. So just a few cards that I rarely get to go over. Um, I'll kind of show here. So the question I had to answer was, uh, he gave three modern options, three vintage options, and he has to choose one. So the one I would choose is very, very simple to me. It's the T206 Ty Cobb Green Portrait in a four and a half uh, from PSA, which is I think currently, I think he said it was 17.4. I went for um, I see a huge amount to be had there and safer money than the modern stuff but since he uh, mentioned T206 I figure I'd go through the few that I have so you have uh, Sweet Corporal back Home Run Baker in a 1 you have Gabby Kravath in a 1 now this guy was the single season home run um, holder, record holder before Babe Ruth. Uh, I believe that was the um, case, or total home runs. Uh, not a Hall of Famer, should be a Hall of Famer. One of these days, I think it'll be uh, corrected. And you have a Simon Nichols in a two. And also you have a 1911 Sporting Life, Eddie Walsh, uh, in a two, I think, believe, I think he is the second lowest career ERA in Major League history to this day. Actually, I have a couple Ad Brennan, oops, uh, Cracker Jack cards. So obviously one, this is a solid one. This is one with marks on it. Pulled that out from Federal League. You have a few strip cards. You have Rogers Hornsby, a 1920. Frankie Frisch, 1926. 34 Gowdy, Carl Hubble. You have 35 Diamond Stars, Wally Berger. And 35 Pepper Martin. <coughs> 35 Gowdy, uh, four way, if you will. And the PSA 4, and this is nice because you have Kiki Kyler, Burley Grimes, Chuck Klein, all Hall of Famers, and then English is down there. 39 Play Ball, Pinky Whitney. 39, yes, that was 39. 40 Play Ball, you Dutch Leonard, Don Hefner. And even like you know, kind of no-name, decent, you know, mid-grade cards you can get for, you know, 10, 11 bucks. Um, so, basically for the price less than what you'd pay to get it slabbed, you can pick some of the commons up. Just absolutely fantastic. Got some more, more 40 play balls. Mac McQuinn and Dolph Camilli. And then we'll get into some of the more in comparison, modern stuff. So you go, here's a really nice example of a 55 Harmon Killebrew rookie card in a five and a half. A Cepeda rookie in a two. Call your strength scene, not the same one he was, he had as an option. But this is an example in a three. Um, you can get these for really little money in comparison. One Marshall rookie and a three. Steve Carlton rookie and a three and a half. 
uh, Fergie Jenkins and a five. I have a few Johnny Bench and a three and a three and a four. And the threes are nice. Yeah, you can find them. I'm sure there's better deals, but there's a lot worse deals. You know, for about 60 bucks for a Johnny Bench rookie. And kind of going back to the older ones. You know, Joe Cronin, 41 play ball. Bill Dickey, 41 double play. 35 diamond stars, Rick Farrell. 39 play ball, Rick Farrell. And it's a Hall of Fame catcher for like 30 bucks. Um, 41, Joe Cronin, Jimmy Fox, double play. 41, play ball, Jimmy Fox, authentic. And a 40, this should be 43, not 49. I actually mislabeled it. Authentic, MP and company, Jimmy Fox. So there's a lot of fantastic cards that you can find out in the market in the lower to mid grades. So this obviously would be a mid grade example. And this would be you know lower grade example. And you're looking at anywhere from 10 bucks to, you know, for commons to maybe up to $100 for a lot of these guys, including rookies. Um, I know this was, well, you know, maybe a hundred bucks, um, which Hall of Fame rookie card from 55. Um, <clears throat> it's just fantastic value that can be found now. Um, and that's mainly because with the current um, market focused more heavily on the modern cards, everyone's going after modern. You've had 2017, 18, 19, really strong rookie classes and highly desirable cards that has actually been a detriment um, to those selling uh, lower to mid-range, mid-grade vintage and has actually driven those prices down. A lot of these cards were listed for a certain price or best offer. And some of these I put 50% of what the ask was. The ask was reasonable to, get, to begin with and they could have easily gotten that, you know, three, four years ago. But now they're snapping at and just jumping on that 50% of what their list price is um, because the market is not skewed towards vintage right now. It's skewed towards modern, which is a shame because these older cards are just beautiful. Um, so my preference now and what I see happening in the future is it only takes one bad or even so-so rookie class to bring values of the current rookie classes, to bring the appeal of modern down, I should say, and to boost the vintage card prices for lower and mid-grade cards right back up. Obviously, high grade is a completely different ball game, but um, and rare cards again, completely different ball game. But the low and mid-grade vintage, um, once we have a bad or so-so rookie class which is bound to happen, then all the vintage prices are going to go right back up. So I have quite a bit of vintage. I'm getting them at prices that I can't believe people are letting stuff go for. And it's actually afforded me um, a, what I consider a, a pretty decent collection, um, even mantle prices. Um, so that's my response, again, to, to Joey Brings It. Um, and his contest my preference is for the Ty Cobb Green Portrait T206 um, of the cards he's giving away I love you know vintage Hall of Fame autos so Al Kaline would be right up my alley um, because that's the other thing is these older players from the 50s, 60s, even 70s um, they're just not signing as much as they used to um, it's not the the turn and burn like it was in the 80s and 90s when you had all these guys from the 50s just trying to make ends meet, signing anything and everything they could. Um, guys are usually much more selective in their signing in general, and as players get older and unfortunately pass away, 
um, the autographs become more in demand. Uh, prime example <clears throat> over the last couple of years is Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver was a great signer for a long time. Um, with his declining health, though, in the past couple of years, he has stopped signing, period. Um, so his prices went way up um, for autos. So I guess you could make one caveat to the modern stuff is really those really vintage autos, those cut autos, I would go for still. But overall, with the modern rookie classes, if I get them, generally I turn them right over and I'll you know, put my money into vintage. So that's my thoughts on modern versus vintage in response to Joey Brings It. And until next time, as always, please remember to collect what you enjoy, enjoy what you collect, and don't let anybody, especially the market or a YouTuber, dictate that to you. And most importantly, have fun. You know, the best way to have fun is to be active in this community. So find your way of participating, whether it's making videos, watching and commenting, going to live streams, group chats, going to your LCS or local card show, or simply talking about the hobby with family and friends. And if you can, respond to videos. Uh, make response videos to, to different guys on, on YouTube, because uh, that's also a great part of uh, the interaction in this community. So until next time, I thank you very much for joining me. Hope to see you again. Have a good one, and bye for now.